Daily military reports reported. Britain's newest aircraft carrier, HMS Queen Elizabeth, with 10 Marine Corps F-35s on board, is helping to take on the lion's share of operations against the Islamic State group in Iraq, UK naval commanders said. It has also piqued the interest of Russian warplanes, who try to keep tabs on those cutting-edge F-35 jet in a cat-and-mouse game with British and US pilots. Speaking aboard the 65,000-ton carrier on its first-ever deployment, Commodore Steve Morehouse said the UK is carrying out most of the missions to wipe out the remnants of the Islamic State in Iraq as the US focuses on its withdrawal from Afghanistan. At the moment, we're taking on the lion's share of that operation over Iraq, which is a fantastic, say, feather in our cap. But an achievement that, a, we're trusted and, b, that we're able to do that, Morehouse told reporters Sunday. It's the first time that a UK aircraft carrier is supporting live military operations on the ground in more than two decades, projecting British military power on a global scale. Morehouse said the carrier offers the UK flexibility in how to conduct military operations abroad and keeps those that wish to cause us harm on their toes. He said the eastern Mediterranean has become more congested and contested over the past decade in light of the heavier Russian military presence in Syria which is resulting in regular encounters with Russian ships and warplanes. We're rubbing up against Russian activity, not in a you know, in a dangerous or aggressive manner, but you've just got other people out here playing in what is a fixed piece of water and airspace," said Morehouse, adding that a Russian warship has come within 16 miles of the carrier. The Commodore insisted that Russian, British and US pilots have a healthy respect for one another, and their conduct has been absolutely professional since the aircraft carrier started anti is operations on June 18. But there is a reality when you buy yourself a fifth-generation aircraft carrier and you take it around the world people are interested in it," he added. Capt. James Blackmore, who commands the eight British F-35 jets and the ten helicopters aboard the carrier, said UK and Russian pilots have come within visual distance of each other. It's that cat-and-mouse posturing, it's what we expect in this region of world. And as you can imagine, it's the first time for F-35s into the eastern Mediterranean," said Blackmore. So, of course Russia wants to look at what they're like, they want to look at what our carriers are like. The state-of-the-art F-35, armed with air-to-air -air missiles and laser-guided bombs, is being used over Iraq to look for other aircraft or unmanned drones, support troops on the ground as well as to carry out surveillance with its sophisticated sensor and radar systems. It's a fifth-generation aircraft with a hugely, hugely capable radar and sensor suite, and that's what it brings. So it's the eyes and ears that it's offering out there," said Morehouse. The HMS Queen Elizabeth and its support ships, which include the US destroyer the Sullivans, will remain in the eastern Mediterranean for two to three weeks before moving through the Suez Canal to continue with a seven-and-a-half-month deployment to India, South Korea and Japan. The carrier also has 10 US F-35 jets from the Marine Corps Fighter Attack Squadron 211 aboard that carry out operations under British command. The Marine Squadron, also known as VMFA-211, or the Wake Island Avengers, sent 10 F-35Bs from its home base on Marine Corps Air Station Yuma, Arizona, to the British aircraft carrier Queen Elizabeth where they operated alongside the United Kingdom's Joint Squadron 617, the Dambusters. Call. Simon Doran, the US senior national representative to the UK's carrier strike group, told Marine Corps Times in an October phone interview that the exercise was part of the Corps' building block approach to interoperability. This is my opinion, Doran said. But, imagine a world where you're agnostic as to whether the ship you are operating from has USS or HMS on it. That really increases the flexibility and the potential lethality of both nations. The next step in the process will take place in 2021 when the Marines once again join the Queen Elizabeth to take part in a full-length deployment," First Lieutenant Zachary Bodden, a spokesman for the Marine Corps said. In addition to potentially providing the Corps with increased deployment flexibility, the deployment on the newest UK carrier provided Marines with opportunities they do not have on the flat-top amphibious assault ships the squadron normally deploys on. The Queen Elizabeth comes with a ski jump ramp on its deck to aid planes taking off from the ship. And for one young pilot with Marine Fighter Attack Squadron 211, taking off with the ski jump was just like going over the crest of a roller coaster. It felt really special to reconnect, Norris told Marine Corps Times in a phone interview. Once we got here, 
The relationships were already established, and it was just a really cool environment, Norris said. Those relationships helped the Marines seamlessly integrate with the pilots of 617 Squadron while conducting training missions in the North Sea, Norris said. It speaks to just how joined the F-35 program is with our partner nations and how a United States F-35 pilots or a United Kingdom F-35 pilot can seamlessly transition, Norris said. For Marine SGT, Alex Cotter, a 6,218 mechanic in the squadron, the biggest advantage was just the sheer space his section had to work on the planes, along with the increased privacy given to the Marines on the roomy Queen Elizabeth. The berthings on the Queen Elizabeth were eight to room for junior enlisted, compared to the open squad bays that would berth roughly 100 Marines on the amphibious assault ship Essex, that Cotter previously deployed on. The ship in general is a lot larger than what I am used to, Cotter said in a phone interview. The increased size made storing all the tools necessary to work on the planes a significantly simpler task, Cotter said. For Cotter watching his British counterparts work gave the Marine an opportunity to size up just how good US Marines were compared to the rest of the world. We work at a lot higher tempo, Cotter said. Both the UK and the US see this exercise as a starting point that can be leveraged to increase the firepower and flexibility of both militaries. HMS Queen Elizabeth will be operating with the largest air group of fifth-generation fighters assembled anywhere in the world, Commodore Steve Morehouse, Commander UKCSG, said in a Marine Corps press release in September. Led by the Royal Navy, and backed by our closest allies, this new carrier strike group puts real muscle back into NATO, and sends a clear signal that the United Kingdom takes its global role seriously," Morehouse added. That future would rely on the uniquely close alliance the US and Britain have, known as the special relationship, since the mid-1940s. This deployment shows all you need to know about the special relationship, Robert Johnson IV, the US ambassador to Britain said in the Marine Corps release. What America and Britain have together is a level of trust and collaboration that goes beyond any other partnership in the world. Marine Corps Commandant Jan. David Berger, Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps Troy Black, Secretary of the Navy Kenneth Braithwaite and Air Force Jan.